Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Brendan's on the Lake Parish Community and a special welcome to any visitors who are joining us today. My name is Chris Kovach and I will be proclaiming the readings. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. There are a few announcements. There will be Eucharistic Adoration this Monday. Further information on these and other important events are listed in the church bulletin. Now please rise. Our celebrant today is Father Matt. And please join in our opening hymn, number 558, Lift Up Your Hearts, number 558. Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Again, uh, also welcome everyone, especially all parishioners and the guests and visitors today. We continue our Easter season. The cross is all lit up, uh, signifying the resurrection. We have Paschal candle with flame going up to heaven with our prayers. The risen Christ is in our midst, he's present, he's coming to us, enlightening us, speaking to us, and feeding us with his own body, blood, soul, and divinity. We acknowledge our need for God's salvation, healing, forgiveness, and so we ask for his mercy. <clears throat> 
You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to lasting life. Amen. <laughs> people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence, when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked that a murderer be released to you, the author of your life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead, of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world, that we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled, and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of, a, of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Easter is this beautiful time given to us by the church, 50 days, of recounting of what happened after the resurrection of Jesus, how he met many, many people, hundreds of people, appeared to so many after his resurrection, before his ascension back to heaven, before him sending his Holy Spirit back upon the apostles in the, uh, the, at the Pentecost. And so today's uh, third Sunday gives us this account when Jesus appears to the apostles in the upper room who were kind of locked in for fear of the Jews. When they saw what happened to Jesus, they thought, well, this is pretty much the end of all of our hopes and um, whatever Jesus was promising, we don't know now because he is dead. But then, of course, some promises were made about his resurrection, rising from the dead. And so, when Jesus appeared, they were terrified, perplexed, confused. And Jesus had to reassure them that um, it's not a ghost. It's not some kind of a group hallucination. He is real, risen, resurrected, glorified body, can walk through walls and doors. There's no stopping him now, no harming him, cannot be killed again. Um, it's quite a lot to take for apostles, as it is, would be for us as well. The first thing that Jesus said this time and, and most of the other times, whenever he appeared to people, he usually tell them, uh, peace be with you, do not be afraid. Because obviously, well, people were terrified and afraid, and uh, they had all kinds of superstitions, just like we do, some of them, about uh, people then firmly believing in ghosts. And uh, of course, you know, we, we kind of, well, Jesus doesn't deny existence of ghosts. He says, well, ghosts have no body, no flesh and bone. So even Jesus says, well, they are ghosts. Uh, it's not me, though. So, um, the peace, Jesus says, uh, peace be with you. The peace that he gave them, it's a, a, a much deeper peace, more profound, more penetrating than the peace that we kind of uh, understand in our English cultural setting now. Peace is lack of war, pretty much, lack of conflict. but. In, in, in those days, uh, uh, in the Hebrew language, God's language, that's shalom. And that's so much deeper. It's, it's uh, wholeness, wellness, well-being. All God's promises fulfilled. All the uh, promises of the life to come can be ours now. That's shalom. So that type of peace Jesus gave to people. And we live today in a time of, of great transitions and, and uncertainties. And there's uh, uh, some say, well, it could be Book of Revelation being unfolded in front of us. Well, we don't exactly know, but we kind of try to recognize some signs of the times. And uh, we have wars and rumors of wars and um, uh, uh, natural disasters and global warming or climate change. Uh, all kinds of things happening and so we may be concerned and, and many people are um, especially as I hear well you know not that much about me but what about my children and grandchildren what type of a world they're coming into um, well it's God's world God's redeemed world and Jesus promised that um, no matter what happens, those who will follow him will be with him forever. So there is hope. There is promise. And the promise was not that we'll be uh, immortal in this life. No, this life is passing, transitional. 
Um, we're here to learn the lesson, to, to kind of uh, learn how to follow Jesus, how to love, how to serve, and then we move on. And then, uh, and then at the end, Christ will come back and everything will be restored, changed, elevated to the level of, will be glorified. So we have this certain hope that the same Jesus who rose, who gave peace to the apostles, he comes to us today giving his peace to us. And we receive his peace through sacraments. There's a reason we come to church because it feels good, feels at peace. And of course our prayers and music and, and kind of our being with like-minded people, faithful, prayerful people helps. But ultimately what helps is the presence of the living Christ, same who died, rose, is alive, and is present, coming to us today, right now, to every single one of us, whether it's through, maybe we may be hearing something, or we may be uh, experiencing something, God is speaking to us today. Uh, speaking of speaking, and, and one of the ways that God is speaking to us today is at least to some of us, at the end of Mass, we'll have a representative, a member from a, a Curcio movement. It's a lay kind of a movement of uh, renewal, spiritual renewal, and so there'll be opportunities to hear how can we possibly get involved. And um, so there are some retreats coming up, and there are some uh, uh, ways to, to kind of revive our faith, the way we pray, we worship, we we experience the risen Christ and we encounter Christ in other people. So there are ways to do it, opportunities to do it. Um, one thing I'm going to mention at the end is that, um, uh, this, speaking of this peace, this coming was well, today, tonight, uh, Sunday night, at All Saints, there was a witness talk by Paul Zuccarelli, a man who died clinically nine times, Within the scope of nine hours, he was revived and then died, revived and then died. And he went places when he was dead. He went outside of his body. He saw things. He met someone. And he's coming back with a message. He's going to tell us what he experienced. And uh, there's no reason to be afraid. He's not afraid to die anymore. And so if you want to come and listen to him, uh, seven to... Uh, 8.15 uh, uh, and then uh, light uh, uh, social finger food in, in the hall uh, free will offering for those who like to chip in towards the expenses so 7pm today All Saints Hall another way of looking at life um, kind of peeking beyond the veil because we all wonder what's on the other side well, some people kind of went there, not all the way, but at least like, you know, first couple of steps. And they came back to tell us. So uh, that's something for us to consider. In the meantime, we give praise to God who comes to us in the Eucharist and his word to give us his peace, his love, his forgiveness, his healing, and his promise that he will be with us until the end of times. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of God, born of ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, to whom the all things made, for us made and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, 
and the Virginia and the Jane man. Our Savior was crucified with Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who follow the Son and the Lord and the Lord of life, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for that forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. People in the journey of faith, we present our prayers and petitions to our loving Heavenly Father. For the Church, that we may be witnesses to the risen Lord, revealing His presence in our acts of mercy and love, bringing His healing touch to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray. For all those who are in authority, that they may pursue justice, right the wrongs that persist, and lift up those who are oppressed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. That the peace given by the risen Lord to his disciples may continue to spread and flower all over the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. For those who are ill, imprisoned, homeless, or neglected, that they and those who care for them may recognize the Lord in each other. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, especially in the Diocese of Buffalo. Let us pray to the Lord. For those struggling with illness and recovering from surgeries, especially Terry DeMarco, Douglas Hendrick, Jason Berry, Arlene Jenkins, and, and those listed in the bulletin, that our Blessed Mother may comfort, console, and help them to find inner joy amid their challenges. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the faithfully departed, especially uh, Sharon Morello, that the Good Shepherd may welcome them into the peace of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all us gathered here today and for our prayers and intentions that we bring before the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, especially for giving us your gift of peace and give of yourself. Help us to be, remain always faithful to you until you call us to eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in our hymn during the offertory, number 816, make that 841. In the breaking of the bread, number 841.
sister and brothers and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord is the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. And on the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the you fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery half fame. <laughs> we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. In prayer to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Joseph, her spouse, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the hope of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace, I give you my peace. I give you, look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, the Lord, be with you always. And with your spirit. After each other, sign of peace. Him who takes away the sins of the world, bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be For those unable to attend Mass in person to receive the Eucharist, I invite you to pray and act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in our hymn during the communion, number 815, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, number 815.
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the <coughs> resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this point, I'd like to invite you, please be seated a few more minutes. Uh, we have a representative from Crucio who will be sharing with us some exciting news about possibilities of growing faith and be involved in a church in some meaningful way. Thank you, Father. And good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about Corsillo, and Corsillo started in the 1940s, so it's not new. It was started by a Spaniard named Eduardo Bonin. He wanted to bring uh, some uh, further faith to his fellow Spanish soldiers. Curcio means little course in the fundamental teachings of Jesus as it lives in all Christians. The goal of the Curcio movement is to make Christ the prime influence in today's society and it still holds true today. Originally started for men, it quickly grew to include women. The movement came to the United States in 1957. Uh, it came through Mexico. It came to the Buffalo area in the late 1960s. So it does have some roots and we have about 2,000 members uh, in the uh, Buffalo Diocese area that participate. So that's the little bit of the history of Curcio. There's much, much more to it. It's, 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 there's a lot of meaning behind it. But I'd like to share with you, if I could, uh, a little bit about you know, my experience with uh, Curcio. I only made Curcio two years ago, so you know, it's still fresh with me. And uh, Curcio is a weekend retreat, and um, what it's done for me, what I'm going to do is kind of compare who I was before Curcio and a little bit after Curcio. Uh, before Curcio, I went to Mass once a week as an obligation. Now I go to Mass multiple times a week because I want to keep Jesus alive within me. Uh, before I'd go to Mass and I'd follow along on the readings and on the prayers and the responses and listen to the hymns. After Curcio, I do a much better job applying the readings to my life. I have a better understanding of the history of why we say what we say at Mass. And I also sing the hymns. Before Curcio, I would wake up in the morning, make coffee, read my emails, and read the news. Now I wake up. And I pray to God and thank him for all the blessings that he's given me. I ask Jesus to join me and guide me throughout the day. And I consecrate myself to Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as St. Joseph. Now, as, I, as a result of Curcio, my Saturday mornings, I look forward to getting together with fellow Curciestas which is not easy to say. That's one of the things you've got to learn. And have a cup of coffee, and we discuss how Jesus is working in our lives and what we do to promote Jesus in the upcoming weeks. It's mostly serious, but we have a great time together. We have a wonderful, wonderful fellowship, and it is the same for the ladies that get together for their groups as well. Finally, and perhaps you may feel this way as well. Before Curcio, I thought my relationship with God was very personal. It wasn't something I really wanted to share. Now, I work hard and open, to open myself up to Jesus 
and let Jesus run my life instead of trying to control everything in my life. I belong to this loving Curseal community that does not shy away from expressing their love for the Blessed Trinity. I belong to a community that I can count on for support, a community that, that also, uh, although we are all different, we all recognize that we are in this life together. In short, Curseal has increased my Catholic faith. Now, Curseal, just as an aside, Curseal is not meant to supplant your faith community here. It really is meant to enhance it so you can live and bring it back to the people that uh, your surrounding neighbors. As I earlier mentioned before, Curseal is for both men and women, and uh, we have a men's Curseal and we have a women's Curseal that's going to be coming up uh, just in two weeks. That's the, the weekend retreat. Uh, after that, we all get together in uh, shared uh, get, getting together. Uh, it's absolutely incredibly beautiful in Curseal when the husband and wives are in Curseal together. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes it takes one of the partners to get the ball rolling. That certainly is true in my life. Um, so I've run through this pretty fast, and if you have any questions, if I've sparked an interest at all in anyone, whether you be young or old, lady, man, we're going to be on the back of uh, church, and we'd be happy to get to know you and, and see if we can uh, introduce you a little bit more to Curseal. Again, thank you, Father. Appreciate your time. Thank you. You almost convinced me to join. So if anyone's looking for some meaningful way to uh, increase your spiritual life, enhance it, um, make it meaningful, well, that's one of the ways, definitely. So um, we'll have a chance to... Uh, uh, there's some pamphlets and leaflets. And also, today, uh, as you will be exiting the church, we have uh, financial reports for, from St. Brendan's for 2022-23 fiscal year. They're in the back, and you can just take a copy and read it at home, and if you have any questions, you know, call us to discuss anything. Have a great uh, week, everyone. You too. Uh, and again, a reminder tonight, uh, 7 p.m., All Saints Church, uh, talk about uh, afterlife near the experience, what, what, what he saw, and how it changed his life, and uh, Paul Zuccarelli. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And your mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And please join in our closing hymn today, number 437. Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 437. <coughs>
Yeah, sure. 